Hello everybody, my name is Colin Brooks and I just want to welcome you to this presentation for the Phys Ed Summit 3.0. Thank you so much uh, for also helping us just promote the, physical, or the Phys Ed Summit um, and all the work you've done to spread the word about this 24-hour digital conference. At this point, we have over a thousand people RSVP'd to participate in the Phys Ed Summit 3.0, which is amazing. So thank you so much for that. Even if you were to tell one other person, that one other person can impact the lives of hundreds of students. So please keep up that great effort of spreading the word about what we're doing with the Phys Ed Summit 3.0. Secondly, just a reminder that we're using technology and we know that things happen. They can happen when you use technology. If for some reason uh, the feed stops, please check the tozzle. Um, you can push refresh on your on the URL and hopefully that'll fix it. If not, you can look for uh, me or another mem member of the Phys Ed Summit 3.0 crew on Twitter or other places to help out with this process of getting it back up and running. So also, after the Phys Ed Summit 3.0, I just, remind, I just wanna remind you that we have a survey for you to fill out. Now, this survey greatly helps us to bring you more quality, free, professional development. Now, upon um, your completion of that, survey, you'll receive a certificate of uh, participation for your professional development. Without further ado, I would like to uh, introduce our next speaker. Um, her name is Sasha Alexov, and she is from PHE Canada. So I'll let her take it away. Thanks, everybody. Hi everyone, my name is Sasha Alexov and I'm a program coordinator at Physical and Health Education Canada. I want to thank the Phys Ed Summit team for having PHE Canada attend and uh, having the opportunity to um, just talk about all the resources and programs we create here. Uh, this should be an amazing and educational 24 hours. So today I'll be speaking to you all regarding one of the resources we offer here at PHE Canada. This resource is called the Ready Check Go. This program or resource is meant to show participants how physically active they are every day and how to goal set to increase this physical activity. Before I begin to explain how Ready Check Go was created and what it is, I just want to uh, briefly explain a little bit of who Physical and Health Education Canada is. So we were established in 1933. PHE Canada works closely with provincial and territorial physical and health education associations and partner organizations from coast to coast to deliver policy standards, resources, curriculum support tools, and relevant information. PHE Canada believes in the importance of leadership development for both students and professionals, and the importance of demonstrating leadership, engaging in partnerships and collaborations, in the principles of Canadian Sport for Life, so the long-term athlete development. PHE Canada strives to achieve their vision by supporting schools and bec becoming health-promoting schools, which include the provision of quality daily physical education and quality school health. Physical and Health Education Canada advocates for and advances quality physical education and quality health education programs offered in health-promoting schools to enable students the opportunity to develop and the knowledge, skills, and attitudes needed to lead physically active and healthy lives now and in their future. We support schools through a range of programs, resources, and initiatives. We are committed to setting quality standards for school-based phys, phys ed and health education programs in Canada and developing tools that support those standards. We also strive for ongoing collaboration between grassroots, provincial, national, and international stakeholders in the development and delivery of services and programs. We also provide meaningful professional development opportunities to staff and volunteers and provide a network of communication and support for its members. We offer a free registration, providing access to a range of benefits and resources, including email updates and news, articles of interest, activity ideas, networking opportunities, and also opportunities to review or pilot resources. So the resources we create here at PHE Canada we actually um, rely on our members to help us pilot these programs to let us know if this is quality programming or pro pro um, quality resources that they would actually use in their classrooms and gym classes or phys ed classes. Uh, over 10,000 members across, we have over 10,000 members across Canada, which are predominantly educators working in the school system. 
the administrators who support them, and the university professors engaged in pre-service teacher training and research in physical and health education. So today's presentation will be focusing on um, the importance of the after-school time period, uh, CAST partnership, so what is CAS and how, why it was formed, what PHE Canada's role in CAS was and what we did, and then um, from there I will discuss and show a bit about uh, the ReadyCheck Our Resource. I just want to let everyone know that although this presentation and resource focuses on the after-school time frame, the ReadyCheck Go resource is a transferable resource. It can be used in school settings, after-school programs, and in recreation. Anything really that is trying to engage children in understanding how physically active they are in a day. So recently, there have been emphasis made on the importance of the after-school time period. Research suggests Many children and youth are engaging primarily in sed sedentary behavior, especially screen time, during the after-school time period. So 72% of 5 to 17-year-olds don't have access to supervised after-school programs. Of those children who do have access, a greater number of 5 to 12-year-olds have access than 13 to 17-year-olds. Numerous studies have shown that children and youth left alone at home after school are more prone to experiment with risky behavior. With the findings of this research, it can be concluded that there are more uh, that there should be more opportunities for children and youth to, to participate in physical activity during the after school time frame. These after school programs should be high of quality have strong leadership, and target youth as well as young children. The Canadian Active After School Partnership, or CASP, was formed at the request of the Public Health Agency of Canada to collaboratively identify how the after school period can be used more effectively to increase the levels of physical activity and healthy eating by Canadian children and youth. National organizations within CASP have been working diligently together on strategies towards this goal since 2010. And I'm just going to show you a little video, um, a promo video of what CAS was, who were the partners within the CAS partnership, and some of the um, initiatives they've conducted. Some kids have lost the knowledge about running, jumping, catching, throwing, hopping, skipping, etc. And so we're trying to make sure that they learn those fundamentals and participating in sport or being involved in physical activity is easier than more logical progression. CAP is the Canadian Active After School Partnership. It's a group of organizations that are all working together that have an interest in the after school time period and getting activity for you. After school quite complex in regards to a number of partners there. So it's making sure everyone is at the table represented from disabilities to girls to Aboriginal, sharing information, sharing resources, and as I say, it just delivers a better program for the kids in the end. Our involvement is the organization coordinating the various partners who make up the ask. There are six of them. Our effort is to try and ensure that the different uh, initiatives that are happening in the context of the ask Absolutely. Uh, has been really effective to get the message across uh, to the Canadian public about the importance of being active in the after school period. The generic problem doesn't work for all. I mean, having opportunities where they can feel confident, develop their self esteem. I mean, then they're more willing to try new things. Setting rules to borrow risk from the start, this program is going to be thought of under a disability lens because we need to develop a program that works for persons with disabilities. Partnerships. 
Uh, great. So um, just a little more explanation. So the objective of CAS was to enhance the delivery of quality after school programs that involved increased access and opportunity to engage in physical activity, healthy eating, and nutritional practices. Uh, the goal was to increase physical activity levels and healthy eating practices of Canada's children and youth and achieving success at reaching or exceeding the 2015 Canadian physical activity targets. Uh, the aim was to influence policy development and enhancements to support better use of facilities, inclusion, and equitable access, knowledge development through social marketing, communication campaigns, better access to resources and support tools, and sharing of best promises and best practices, as well as uh, to try and increase training and capacity building among program leaders all across Canada. So within the CAS partnership, as you've seen in the video, there were four key pillars which were focused on. Uh, so there were six organizations, and within the six organizations, uh, we worked together to try and um, um, focus on these four key pillars to try and inc to increase physical activity and healthy eating and lifestyle. So of those four pillars, there were supporting mental health through active after-school programs, engaging Aboriginal children and youth in active after-school programs, reducing community barriers to active after-school programs, and engaging home and families to enhance the access to after-school programs. So PHE Canada's role in CAST partnership focused on the engaging home and families aspect of it. We really try to focus on um, figuring out what parents know about the active of the after-school time frame and how we can kind of increase this knowledge to try and get their children to uh, increase their physical activity within that time frame. So this initiative sought to better understand the choices that parents and caregivers make around after-school programs for their children and to create resources to motivate and inform them about the issue. The main activity of the Engaging Home and Family Project was to provide information and education to after-school leaders, parent, parents and guardians, and teachers regarding quality active after-school programs and strategies to get more children and youth active during this time period. The resources and educational materials produced under this initiative were founded upon information derived from uh, the parent guardian survey we created called What Are Kids Doing After School? Considering CAST's policy framework and the increased importance of the after school time period, CAST and Physical and Health Education Canada were interested in speaking with parents to understand how they perceive after school programs, what program and delivery components they value, and what barriers they confront in supporting the particip participation of their children. Especially, we targeted the questions to the parental needs relating to children and youth with disabilities, girls and young women, and Aboriginal communities and newcomers to Canada. An online survey was launched on January 8, 2013 and closed on February 11, 2013. Once the data was cleaned and collected, a total of 2,567 completed surveys have been received, which was a phenomenal success by industry standards. Given the targeted outreach to partner organizations, the final survey data included an oversample of parents and caregivers of children with disabilities, Aboriginal parents and caregivers, and lower income parents. Um, and I'll be now showing you some of the results from the survey. So the most important issue for parents uh, for their children between the 3 p.m. and 6 p.m. Uh, time are getting homework done. So 40% of parents said that that was the most important issue. 
of the quality of their after school program. So we did have parents that would get their children to go to after school programs and they really were concerned about the quality of programming as well as supervision. So children in the survey were almost evenly divided between being enrolled in a program or organized activity after school and not being enrolled in such a program. We wanted to focus around the parents who put their children in these after school programs. The parents of children who were in these programs and organized activities were asked about the reasons their child or their children were in these uh, activities. The most popular reasons each mentioned for enrolling children uh, in such activities were to have fun, to take part in physical activity, and to develop their interests and hobbies. Smaller proportions of parents mentioned enrolling their children to make new friends and to keep them busy and out of trouble. Uh, help with schoolwork, learning about healthy eating, and learning about religion and culture were least often mentioned as reasons for enrolling children in these after-school programs. Parents who did not have their child in after-school programming said that they preferred to have their child with them at home. Other reasons focused on barriers such as lack of quality programs, the cost of the program, the hours and the location of the program, and another 32.4% mentioned other issues. When these were examined, parents had mentioned is issues such as their child not being interested in after-school activities, their child being old enough to stay on their own, so, or the mother being on maternity leave and being able to stay with the child. Um, the job action with Ontario high school teachers that canceled after school activities, and that some of the activities their children were enrolled in were done at a later, later time in the evening, or that they had a lot of homework, um, and that the school day was already long, so why uh, enroll their children in another sort of programming? It was not possible to easily identify one clear issue that was mentioned here more than the others. They were all equally as important. Uh, perhaps the most critical finding is that while parents and caregivers were aware of the importance of physical activity for their children, and this was a factor in decisions around after-school activities, children often did not get the recommended amount of physical activity, an hour or more a day each day during the after-school time period. Coupled with the perception of many parents that they were satisfied with their after-school programming, this might mean that parents might know physical activity is important, but may simply not know how much physical activity their children should be getting each day or how much is recommended for healthy development. On a related note, only three in 10 parents were very satisfied with their children's levels of physical activity, leaving seven in 10 parents who were not satisfied with this level. It could also be found in another research from the Toronto Middle Childhood Coalition that parents and caregivers are general, generally satisfied with after-school programming because there are limited options and to remain dissatis dissatisfied does not create options. In other words, it may not be perfect, but it is the best that is available. It might be the view of many parents and caregivers. Results of this survey suggest that there are several opportunities to address gaps in information and to advance the goals of CASP among Canadians. Based on these survey results, a strategy was developed to package and disseminate this information in the most effective way. The resultant resources and educational materials that we created here were a definition of quality active after school programs, four parent guardian checklists designed to use for vetting quality after school programs and an educational resource entitled Ready Check Go. The Engaging Home and Families project team in, a, in an attempt to provide a unified definition of quality programming developed a working definition of a quality active after school program. This definition will help to enhance the delivery of quality after school programs for providing a common understanding of what constitutes a, a quality program. While good work has been done in sport and rec for healthy child development, the use of quality in the after-school context had yet to be specifically defined. So there are three primary resources used to inform the description and characteristics of quality active after-school programs. These were the seven CASP principles for a national after-school framework, the High Five Quality Framework developed by Parks and Recreation Ontario, including the High Five Principles of Healthy Child Development, and design guidelines essentially for quality programs, 
and uh, a literature review process undertaken by the Ontario School Collaborative to examine quality indicators for after-school programs. The CAS definition of a quality active after-school program is the first national document that describes in detail what constitutes quality programming. And I'll read it right here, it's on the slide. And so this is just a working description of quality active after school. But essentially what it says is that a quality active after school program is evidence-based and provides an intentional child-centered, community-based and needs-driven environment for children. It begins the moment the school day ends and, in, and continues until the moment the parent or caregiver resumes care for their child. It is led by caring, trained and skilled adults ideally supported by mentored youth leaders who together provide a safe environment for children to grow. A quality program provides daily opportunities to enhance the well-being of a participant children, of all participant children and ensures their physical, social, emotional and intellectual development. A variety of physical activity is provided every day for at least 30 minutes. It is of moderate to vigorous intensity, is age and stage appropriate and includes skill and knowledgeable components. Quality programs have a good balance of both play and instruction to ensure the mastery of physical and life skills. Food provided is nutritious and portions are appropriate. Quality programs value, plan, and budget for inclusion of all children, disabled, aboriginal, ethnic, economic, status, etc. Friendships and positive social interactions are valued and nurtured between children. Quality programs ensure all children have maximal access to a variety of indoor and outdoor community facilities which are safe and secure, have well-maintained and moderate equipment, and are accessible for all. Programs are both fun and challenging and designed to bring about improvements in health and skill. Quality programs are directed in part by valuing input from participants and their parent guardians, and participating and having a voice for, from both is encouraged. Quality programs are regularly evaluated and lessons learned inform program enhancement. Policies and procedures are drafted, taught, implemented, and reviewed regularly and are open to review by parents, guardians to ensure quality as described above is maintained. Very wordy, but it's all good quality um, description of what an after school program should be about. Uh, so to help parents understand what constitutes as a quality after-school program and strategies for communicating with after-school program leaders, the Engaging Home and Families Project team created four checklists. Each checklist provides a list of key questions parents should be asking themselves, their child, and after-school leaders or teachers when inquiring about an after-school program. So the four checklists include how parents can support girls' participation during the after-school time period, the quality after-school experience considerations for parents and guardians, checklists for parents of a child with a disability, and the quality after-school other experiences considerations for parents. So the other uh, experience considerations for parents is just a checklist or kind of um, an idea or ideas for parents to use when they have their child in with them. So this kind of answered the question or kind of gave a resource to parents who keep their children instead of uh, putting them in an after school program. This kind of guides them of what they should really be doing with their child within that time to kind of increase physical activity and increase their healthy lifestyle. Um, so the Engaging Home and Family Project team specifically developed two checklists for the key target populations, parents of children with a disability and parents of girls and women. These documents were created to ensure all parents have the necessary information to make sure their child is receiving a quality after school experience. And these documents can be found on a website that the CASP initiative has created. It's called activeafterschool.ca. Uh, so once you go there, you will see the parent guardian section and all these checklists are available for free for anyone to take a look at. Uh, and if I have time, I'll show you the website later on. So the Engaging Home and Families Project team also developed an educational resource for after-school leaders, teachers, parents, and children to help each of these populations develop a better understanding of the amount of physical activity they engage in. So the two major findings from the parent survey were the fact that parents have a knowledge 
gap regarding the actual amount of time their children participate in physical activity and that parents receive most of their after-school information from teachers. Based on this information, we've created an assessment for learning called the Ready, Check, Go, which is an activity tracker to help children aged 8 to 12 and their parents discover more about their actual levels of physical activity, especially moderate to vigorous, and that they experience during a typical day, the different activities they undertake, when and for how long, and how they can be more active. So there are two sets of resources that were developed. There was an after-school resource stream and an in-school resource stream. But essentially, you can use this tracking sheet uh, in any area. Uh, each resource stream has a leader teacher guide, a participant student guide, and a parent guide. Um, and each stream is, of resources is also divided into two categories, the ages 9 to 12, and which is grade 4 to 6, and ages 12 to 14, so grade 7 to 8. So what the Ready, Check, Go does is it promotes the value of physical activity to parents and to teachers and leaders, as well as engage them as key decision makers in the healthy living behavior of children. Because as we know, if the parents aren't doing it, then the children won't be as well. So they kind of are the lead and the example to get their children more active. Um, so the Ready, Check, Go resource includes everything you need. Uh, to track your physical activity, as well as a goal setting component at the end to kind of make goals for you to increase or your physical activity or increase your uh, healthy lifestyle. So the parent guides are a vital component of this child's health and the health and lifestyle habits. It is important that they are involved in this program as they are key players in helping their children become more active. This resource is designed to support the implementation of the Ready, Check, Go program by providing participants with consistent information in all settings. So this workbook in itself, the parent guide, uh, gives a rundown of what the Ready, Check, Go is about, what the tracking sheet is essentially trying to uh, accomplish, and it also provides background information for parents about uh, physical activity, what it is, the different levels, so moderate to vigorous, the importance of regular physical activity, and then it gives goal setting suggestions to help them with their child to set goals to become more active, if that's the goal they're trying to reach. The Leader's Guide is designed to facilitate the delivery and instruction of the Ready, Check, Go. So essentially it's similar to the Parent Guide, but there's more instruction on how to actually teach these children um, how to use a tracker. Um, it begins with a brief introduction to important concept of physical literacy, physical activity, and its various levels of intensity, and the importance of the after-school period for increasing levels of physical activity among children and youth. It's designed to provide after-school leaders with information on how to deliver the Ready, Check, Go. And then this workbook uh, helps participants understand the importance of physical activity and the amount that they need on a regular school week or school day, and it provides a framework to help them set the goals. Uh, so the younger grades only fill out one log for one day of the week and one day for the weekend, whereas the older grades or the older kids would fill out the tracking sheet for the whole week and then one day on the weekend. Um, and this would hopefully accurately show them what they normally do on a typical week and weekend. Um, and once they see how active they are or how inactive they are, then they can have a goal, they have goal setting and reflection questions that they answer and try and set. So here's an example of what an activity tracker looks like. Um, I also want to note that this Ready, Check, Go resource has transferable skills. So you're not only being physically active or trying to be active, you're actually using math skills and literacy. Like you have to learn, you have to know how to read, you have to know how to write, um, and comprehension skills. So you can use this in a classroom setting if you, if you will. Um, the resource in itself doesn't have physical activity games or activities to do. It's kind of just to assess where they are, uh, where their children or where your students are uh, with physical activity. So this is a Monday activity tracker sheet. And you can see that there's the phase of day. 
So there's before school, during school, after school, and evening. And there's different time blocks, which are 30-minute time blocks. And you just write down what you were doing um, in those time blocks. And then you put a check mark uh, within the um, intensity level. So you have inactive, light, moderate, and vigorous. And then once you um, fill out the whole sheet of the day, you calculate how many check marks were in each um, activity level. So how many inactive, how many light, how many moderate, how many vigorous. And you put the total just in each of the uh, day, phase of day. And then from there, you will calculate um, for the week and then for the weekend how active or inactive you were. And then from there, you goal set. So the goal setting sheet um, included use the SMART goals, so specific, meaningful, and measurable, action-oriented, realistic, and time-bound. So you, once you realize how active or inactive you are, you set goals, but you have to set realistic goals. Um, and once you set these goals for the week, you have to try and meet them. So for an example, you would Say you want to go for a bike ride at least three times a week, and that's the goal you set because you realize you're not you're not very active after school or in the evening. So you want to go for a bike ride or go for a brisk walk uh, three times a week to try and increase that physical activity just to start. So um, a way to help you meet this goal would to maybe ask a parent or ask your friend if you want to go bike riding with me after school. So stuff like that can ha kind of help um, set the goals for the children to actually. Uh, be successful. Um, so uh, the Ready Check Go is available for a price at our uh, on our website. So if you go to www.phecanada.ca/readycheckgo, uh, you'll see it. Um, or if you go to www.activeafterschool.ca, the parent guide would be available there. Uh, the participant workbook is about $6, and the leader guides are $10, or leader teacher guides, and the parent guides, as I think I mentioned, are free. Uh, so if you're a parent and you're really interested in this, you can just go on the Active After School website and download the, the PDF version of it. Um, I just want to quickly go over the resource with you, just so you can have an example. So this is the um, 9 to 11 year old uh, go book. So you start off, just write your name, what grade you're in, your school, and you have kind of um, uh, prep questions, so just to see if kids understand the levels of um, physical activity there are. So there's inactive, light, moderate, intense, and then you kind of draw a picture or write what you think that means. But I'm just going to move down to give you a better idea of what the activity tracker looks like. So you could just, you see there's weekday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You circle one, you write the date, and then you just write down what was I doing. So example, sleeping, watching TV, sitting or doing homework, walking, dancing, playing sports, etc. So say at 8 a.m. I was walking to school. I would write walking to school, and then I would check, oh, I guess it's light. And Teachers in their teacher resource, they have the tools and instructions on how to teach them about the different intensities of uh, physical activities so that the kids will actually have a knowledge of what that actually means. Um, so from there, you fill it out. And then you go to fill it out for the week. And then there is an activity where you have to calculate all the light check marks, all the moderate check marks, and all the vigorous from the week, so from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or if it was just Monday and Saturday that you filled out. So that will give you the proper um, look at how many check marks you were for each activity intensity. And if you have more an inactive than vigorous, then maybe that would be your goal set, goal setting uh, strategy is to try and increase the vigorous check marks and decrease the inactive. And then from there, you would have the goal setting aspect. So my goals for the week, before school, I'll do this, after school, I'll do whatever, evening, the same thing, and then ways to help you meet it. So you can do this with your child, do this with as a leader to try and get the kids more engaged in um, or aware, I guess, bringing awareness of how physically active they are. Um, okay. 
So like I said, it's available on our website at www.phecanada.ca. Um, and that is all. If you have any questions, feel free to visit our website or email me at sasha at phecanada.ca, or you can also give me a call. I'd love to chat with any of you. Um, but other than that, I want to thank you again for listening, and um, 